I was gonna do that. Your phone looks like it got shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happened? The gown lifestyle interview one. You calling it the gown lifestyle, bro? Something like that. No, you can't call it that. That's not your thing. I'm pushing Kapo's thing, bro. Oh, really? It's on purpose? Yes. Okay, but can you line your stocking? Because now the stocking doesn't make sense. What do you mean? This line is on the side. It should be the other side, so it's just plain. Like, turn it around. No. Make that line at the back. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, it's on both sides. Okay. You see, that's how us gangsters wear it. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. Um, this is the gown interviews inspired by the gown lifestyle. Shout out to Kapo. I'm biting your stuff. Um, this is my very first something. What? Can we not do it, Family Chi Mansion, not the gown thing? And it's the Family Chi Mansion. Like, welcome to the Family Chi Mansion. I feel like that's what it should be. Like, the gown I saw, but it should be Basically, family what Chi. you're seeing, what you guys are seeing is exactly what happens every single time. <laughs> I come up with an idea, and everybody just like crushes my idea. <laughs> I didn't crush your idea. I'm just trying to build on it, you know, to make it, you know. Let's, let's, let's make money. <laughs> welcome to our first show. Uh, and as you can see, our first guest is Nadia Nakai. I just decided to do something. I wanted to do an online thing where I get to interview artists because I feel like I know the questions that artists want to be asked. And, you know, and what better way to start it than to start with Nadia Nakai, who has an album dropping in a few days. Yay. Welcome to the show. Thank you very it's much. It's an actual show. It is a show. Yeah, welcome to the show. Uh, basically, your album is dropping in a few days. And I wanted to know how you feel right now, you know? I think I'm extremely nervous. I have like a lot of feelings. I'm nervous, I'm scared, and I'm anxious. Nervous because it's like, wow, we've been working on this album for so long. I don't know what people are going to say, you know? Mm. Like, what are they going to think about it? And excited because I finally get to release an album. Yeah. You know, like we've been working on it for so long and so hard. And you know how hard I was waiting for a release date and now that I finally got it, it's like, damn, it's actually really here. And it's actually How long did it take you to drop your debut? From when you started rapping or when you started thinking that you're making an album too? I think it's now, three years. Three years? Two and a half years, yeah. But how long? Since you started making an album or since you started With rapping? With you. No, oh, you where? Not in your career. In That's the... like my whole career. I think when I started making music, you're always working towards releasing an album. That's so, like the... so how far has it been? How long has it been? I think probably like eight years. Eight years. Yeah. And during those eight years, I've attempted to record albums and they just never happened. Like yeah. With my previous record label, we attempted an album. It never came out. This one, we attempted an album and then it got scratched by you. And then we've got the official album. So I've technically worked on three albums in my career. And are you happy now? I'm so happy, but I'm more appreciative of understanding the process of what it takes to make an album. You know, I don't think I quite understood it. I thought it was just making songs, putting it together, make a track list, get it out there, you know. But I was able to learn how you need to work on synergy and having a, like a golden thread throughout your whole album. And I, I keep saying, I've been doing interviews all day, and I keep saying that it's so, like, I'm grateful that I had you to guide me there because you got Tuto on your third album. You know, and you went through all of that to get to that point where people like gave you so much pride or praise because you got a, such a musical project, you know. I feel my album is my first tuto oh, and not right. my third because I got to work with you. You already went through all of that. I feel like my music is, is it's a very musical project. It's very conceptual. There's stories there. And I'm allowing people into my life a little bit more that I don't think I'd have been able to get to before. So now that you speak about you know, the process of making the album and what you went through. Don't you want to give us a little bit of insight of the emotions that you went through, you know, when you were making the album, every time you thought, I'm going to drop this album, you know, the exec saying, no, this is not it. And mm. then, you know. Who's the exec? Whoever it was. <laughs> it was you, bro. Yeah. I hated you. It was so freaking tough. You don't understand how hard it is. I don't know if you understand it because... Maybe you did when you were Double HP, I think. I don't know if he was mm. that involved in your music, like how you were with mine, but it's so hard to record a song and be so convinced that the song is done and so used to the verses that you put on that song and be like, damn, this is how I hear the song and then come and play it for you. And you'd be like, no, I don't think that's good enough. I think you need to change it. I need you to work on it. And then you have to like work on it further from what you're used to with the song and then realize, oh shit, okay, I get it once you actually rewrote the, the situation. Yeah. You know, and it's like that part is hard. I think it was a, it was extremely emotional for me because I always had an idea of what I thought sounded good enough until I got better than good enough. 
then it's like, oh shit, okay, I get it. But it's hard to get past that 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 hump of, no, I don't want to listen to people. I actually think this song is good enough. Or mm. no, I don't want to listen to people. I think this song deserves to be on the album. Being like, oh shit, he was right later because it was like, it did come out better. I was able to push myself and people are like, why did it take so long for your album to come out? Was it the restrictions of the record label? And it's like, no, it's not about that because you guys don't actually understand what it takes to make an album. I had to yeah. grow into an artist that could make a good enough album, which what is Nadia Naked. Do you think that you've, um, through making the album, you know, I know making the album is so tough and you go through so many things in real life mm. that you end up trying to put on the album, um, since you named the album Naked, does it mean that you are, are, are like basically putting everything that makes you on the album, is it that personal? Because you can, you know, when you, when you hear the word naked, it's either you think of it sexually, mm. or you think of it as a metaphor of someone saying, you know, this is who I really am, you know, that's because when someone's naked, they're at their uh, most vulnerable mm. form. So is it you saying this is, you know, me being vulnerable, me being myself and... Yeah, I think it's, I think a, a lot of things have happened to me in the past couple of years that people would love for me to, to address. And I never felt addressing it on social media or on media was ever the right platform for me personally. I've always had other people kind of addressing my issues, like with the makeup challenge, you address that. Now with the, the dressing situation, other people came in to talk about it. I was never the one that said, this is how I feel about this. Mm. And I think that's exactly what my album became. I had to like strip myself of all these barricades and barriers that I created around myself to protect myself from the public. And I know that they want to know what's on my mind. They know things that could affect me that I never really spoke about. And I feel like sometimes you need to toot your own horn. You need to tell people your accolades in their faces because they don't want to give that pat on the back to you. But it's difficult for me to do it in the platforms that people expect me to because I feel like then it comes out like, I'm saying I'm the greatest, but then people take that as, okay, so you're saying who got the spot instead of you is shit. It's not that. I'm not saying that you don't deserve it either, but I'm saying don't overlook my shit. Yeah. You know, and I've never been that person that's going to tweet that. That's what's going to so be So do you album. feel overlooked? Like as a I female, do. firstly, do you feel overlooked? by what you've done for female rap mm. and secondly do you feel overlooked when compared to other male rappers like do you feel like you know you're in the top tier of of the rappers that have been doing it you know big in in the country or on the continent i do i feel i am overlooked a lot i feel like last year without an album i had one of the best years as an artist period not even female like I, with all my male counterparts I really was killing it you know and I still get there's always excuses why I don't deserve to be where I need to be there's always excuses of oh I think people think oh she's pretty so things are easy for her oh she's signed to family she's just she's associated with Casper Nuvis it comes easy to her but it's mm. actually I work fucking hard like you could sign a person tomorrow and if they're doing absolutely nothing for their fucking career you're not going to be able to make them a superstar I had hits I've had hits I'm one of the most booked artists in South Africa, period. I'm not even talking about girls. I'm talking about artists overall. But I'm, I'm always the one that has excuses. And I'll sit with the guys at the panel. I'm like, guys, well, what were you thinking? What do you mean? What are you saying? It's like, no, but you only released two songs that year. It's like, okay, but there's people that didn't have albums out, but you're still putting them ahead of me because they're men? Why? What is that? So... There's always that thing of, damn, I want to actually just come and be like, fuck y'all niggas, I'm the best, I'm the baddest. I literally, when I came out, there were no other female rappers that were doing what I was doing. I mean, there were, there were missing tabbies and cubas and supers that were really killing it, but it was more underground backpack rap. They were like the back to the old back to the city vibes. When I came through with the blue hair and the body suits and the thigh high boots with Saka win and like me, there weren't anyone else like that. But it's so easy to act like that didn't happen. Like... We only all started now. So you no. think that the game doesn't give you enough credit? I definitely think that. All right. And I flex a little bit on the album about stuff like that. All right. And how's your relationship with other female rappers? I am friends with some female rappers. I'm not friends with some female rappers. And right. it's fine. I don't feel like we need to get along with everyone. I think it's, it's just the way it is. People are individuals. People have their own 
interpretations of why you do certain things and you can't always explain yourself to people you know you're just gonna have to live your truth and if they believe certain things they believe it if they don't they don't i'm not a person that's going to explain myself to the whole world mm -hmm. you know i know some people have problems with me and i'm not willing to figure that out i said my truth i've apologized to certain people about the way that i acted and subs that i've dropped and realized there's still an issue and at the end of the day that no longer is my issue because mm. i've passed that you know so. you spoke about the difficulties of uh, being a female rapper and how you overlooked and whatever so um the other day i was on twitter and i saw people going at you about how you dress and mm. so on and so forth but i thought to myself so if people have a problem with how you dress, like, but they never have a problem with how Cardi B dresses or, or Nicki Minaj when they take their bums out and everything, but when it's a South African act, it's a problem. Um, do you feel like the industry in South Africa or the fans kind of put Americans on a pedestal and let them express themselves and do whatever they want to do? Mm. Number one. And number two, I wanted to add to that question. You know, since people are always talking about rape and rape culture and, and telling women how to dress, mm. uh, do you think that um, people are, are kind of are hypocrites, you know, to yeah. tell you as well how to dress? I definitely feel like there is a certain level of double standards for artists in South Africa compared to America, and then another layer of double standards, women in South Africa and men in South Africa. There's a there's a thing of, like, I've always give this comparison that when Ricky gets on stage and he takes off his dress or you take off your, your shirt, you get, like, glorified for that. No one says you're using sex to sell your music. No one tries to discredit you because you're coming out looking sexy. Mm. Whereas with a woman, it's all about she's selling sex. She's not actually a musician. She's just this and that and that and that. There's always a level of, let me take away her power and it's actually coming from girls like it's other girls that are actually breaking down mm. other girls and i don't understand it and i'm it got to a point where i'm no longer fighting it i'm always going to live in my truth and i know the type of person that i am as an individual but the way i dress doesn't define me the way i dress doesn't mean i deserve to be raped the way i dress doesn't mean i deserve to object to be objectified the issue is not about the way i dress the issue is about the men that are making these decisions to beat on women to rape women and treat them like trash so the people on social media when it hurts me is it's women that are doing that you shouldn't be saying that to another girl because you are literally fueling that that mindset that men think that they can treat you a certain way depending on how you dress Mm. which is the most messed up, twisted thing I've ever heard in my life. So do you think that females in South Africa hate on each other more than the men? Definitely, but I don't even think it's only here. I think everywhere. They mm. had the same situation. They had the same problem. Women are territorial. And I think that's why it's so easy to, to pin women against each other in an industry and say there has to be a number one queen. You see it with Cardi and Nikki. They can't be both. They don't want two. They have to choose one. And it's not, I don't think it's coming from men. I think it's coming from women. So do you think you also targeted because you, you're sexy and you're pretty? Do you ever feel like people are going at you because of that? Like they would rather prefer a female MC to, um, you know, be like a tomboy? You That's know the saying? thing. You would think they would prefer it, but they don't want that. They can come at me for me being sexy and using my sexuality and femininity and be completely comfortable in my skin, you know, and use that as part of my brand and be upset about that. But they don't want me to be a tomboy because if I was a baggy girl looking like one of the niggas, they would not fuck with me the way they fuck with me right now. That's a fact. You want to know what I look like on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You want to know what I'm wearing. You want to talk about me if it's good or bad. You do want to talk about me because if I wasn't anything else than I am, I'd be boring to you. I don't rip. If I'm dressed like a nigger, I'm not representing the South African woman that's on the street right now. I am literally the representation of South African women. The weave, the nails, the look, the makeup, the clothes. I look like the people that buy my music. So therefore, you're going to resonate with me. Nicki Minaj makes music for hoes. Cardi B, sorry, makes music for hoes. That's her thing. She ends up looking like the people that buy her music because the bad bitch is the hoes, the yes, I'm about the money, shmoney, nigga. That's who she caters to. But when they see me doing it well and getting very good at it and getting like claimed to it, they want to be like, no, but no, actually, we don't like this. Why her? Mm -hmm. and not me now because I look just like her. I could do it too. Why am I not doing it? Why is it her? I think that's where the, the unrest happens and then it turns into 
outburst of hate. Okay, so now you also spoke about how people like comparing female rappers and whatever. I've seen a lot of debates about you and Boiti. Yeah. You know, um, how do you feel about people comparing you to her since she's she's like she's doing well right now? Yeah. Yeah. I honestly, I don't have a feeling right now because I feel like Boiti and myself are two levels or stages in our careers, and. I'm about to release my album and I've had a, a long time to grow with my fans and I've seen them travel this journey with me that I know where I'm trying to go as an individual. And I'm, I've always said that having more female artists or rappers in, in, the, in the game is the best because I can't be number one if I'm running by myself. I, can, I have to run against people in order to be number one. You know, mm. you need competition. And that's perfectly fine for me. When she came out, I was like, uh, I'm not sure how this is going to work. You know, she's got, already got a big following. South Africa loves her. She's got a lot of clout. I'm not going to say I was shook because she was on number one for how long? <laughs> I don't even know for the first range. She was on number one chart on iTunes for a minute, you know? And I was like, damn, do you know how long it took me to get a million views on Namin? This is because I started from like me. It took me years to work and cultivate my fans and learn myself and change my music and go with different teams and fight and cry and break barriers, get to a point where I could get an achievement like a million views on Namin. That's a lot easier for a boy to, to get because she's already got such a following. Okay. But I feel that she, every time I speak to her, it sounds authentic. I believe that she really had a passion for making music. I just want to be sure that she's also part of this movement that we're all doing as girls in hip-hop you know that she also wants to push this agenda of hip-hop culture and women getting a little bit more equality to our male counterparts and be able to be part of that voice because she has a powerful voice and i think she should also try use it for for the whole holistic hip-hop game because she's here she's here to stay yeah you know okay on a lighter note how is your relationship with sports scene and how much money are you making from that <laughs> i'm making a lot of money from sports scene Mm -hmm. My relationship with Sports Scene is really cool. Um, I'm permanently in the stores now because the range is doing really well, which is quite exciting to me. Um, I don't want to talk about my bag because, you know, the tax man, I'm trying to get It's It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's cool. Is it? Yeah. You um, remember when you said I shouldn't take that deal? Did I say that? You definitely said that to me, Rufi. What did I say? You said, don't take this deal, focus on the album. All the deals are going to come after the album is out. You said that. And I thought about it. I'm like, yo, maybe I mustn't take this deal. Like, no, that's not what you. I said. You're lying. You You're said lying. That. That's, that's not what I said. I said, what you said. I, said, I said to you, you need to easy up on the photo shoots and the prettiness and the, the Instagram that's, and no, stuff. Like, that's I what, what I was saying. No, I, I'm telling you, that's what happened. You When you went to Mauritius or whatever, yes. that first trip that you took with them, yeah. that's what I was telling you, that you need to ease up on like all this other shit. And you definitely said all the deals will come after the album is yeah, done. Yeah, because I told you everything else will come when the music is right, not when the album is done. I said, when you get the music right, everything else comes. And that was my worry that everybody's waiting for you to drop an album and you're doing everything else, which makes you money, but the core of your brand was starting to slack because you were not paying, paying attention to it. And I remember telling you that making an album is not easy. You need to really sit on it every single day. It's not, some, mm. it's not something that you can make in two weeks. And the song that you like the first time you do it doesn't mean that it's strong it's enough end. or it's gonna end up on the album. You have to spend time on the album. You don't drop, you know, initially. So don't say I never say, I, I don't say I said I you like shouldn't you say. Your story now, no, that's what I always said, said to you. He definitely said don't do that thing. He definitely said don't do it. Imagine, I listen to it for you. Yo. So you don't listen to me? Not all the time. I listen to you, but you know I'm stubborn. And you think I'm stubborn, but you're actually really stubborn, bro. I'm not stubborn. You're so stubborn. Like sometimes you fight, I feel like you fight me just because you bored that day. And actually I'm just going to fuck with Nadia. No. <laughs> Do you it's know like how much it takes so for crazy. me to, to end up like reprimanding you or... or you're lying. It takes a lot. I'm telling you, by really? the time I speak to you, I've spoken to like T. Lee. I've spoken really? To, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. I always take time before... I'll be worried saying, hey, Nadia's doing too much of you know the bums now like she needs to really get in studio no i don't mind the bums yeah we don't know about bums. but i'm just saying like you sometimes i'm like you you're just concentrating on your brand more than the music and i'll speak no, to t lee so before by the time i speak to you it's like now i'm really really worried like yo you know what i'm saying what are you doing with this and this and that yeah okay. and this interview is not about me 
No, it's about us. Together. No, it's the about it's about you. <laughs> so, um, on the album, yeah. what is your favorite song that you can't wait people to hear? Can't wait for people to hear. I think. Can I say two songs? Or just one? It's actually okay. just one. Okay, two. Okay. But you need to, you, even if you say two, you you, you kind of have to put one above the other. Like. Okay, so I think the one that I would really be excited about is um, Creatures with um, Questa. Right. Purely because I don't think people have ever heard me on a song like that. And I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. It's an also a storytelling song. I mean, I'm talking about how the industry is filled with evil people and I'm mastered by creatures, you know? I, I like the way that story unfolded and how it sounds sonically. Okay, and uh, the second one? Chankura. Oh, I... Because I feel like when me and you push a song, it's fucking insane because what happened with Lamin. So I'm yeah. excited to see what Chankura is going to do. That's the hot song. It's fire. I'm so happy I stole That's that the song me. that Nadia <laughs> took from my album. Yeah. It was supposed to be on Sweet and Short. It was supposed to be the only hip hop song on Sweet and Short. And then Nadia, you know, came to my house. She was wearing this outfit, right? <laughs> she was like, I got a girl that looks just like me. If you drop this song, I'm joking. I don't know how she took this song. Well, she was crying. I was crying. I was yeah. crying. I convinced you that you need to do a whole Kwaito album. Don't leave it up to me now. Mm hmm And you said sharp, yeah. Yeah, I don't have any more questions. I also don't want to make this too long. I think we've covered a, a little bit. Maybe we'll do a part two somewhere I think after so. the album drops. Can I ask a question? What? What's the most annoying thing about me working, working with me on this project? The most annoying thing about you is that you're stubborn. Like, your stubbornness gets to a point where it's like, you you borderline have to <laughs> leave Nadia to do what she wants to do, even though you know that it might not be the best thing for her. You know, you're very you're very stubborn. And the crazy thing is sometimes when you're supposed to use your stubbornness, you don't use it. It's like this you choose the, the wrong, wrong times. times to be stubborn, you know what I mean? But I also want to mention what I like about you, what I liked about working with you is that the, t the times that you listen and learn, mm. you, you actually grasp exactly what someone is saying and you can hear the growth. Like making the album with you, I could hear you go from um, Calypso. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> That, was, that was me. That song was horrible. Um. I, I, I heard you go from Calypso <laughs> to um, Creatures, which is also one of my favorites. Just like lyrically, you you really, really stepped it up. Thanks. And a song that you did with Cooley too. On the blog. I think that's my favorite. Joint. I think that's your favorite, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was so favorite. dope to hear, firstly, a Kulichana and Nadia collab because I wouldn't think it would happen because yeah. you, you don't really hang out like that. Yeah. And secondly, just like it, 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 he complimented the song, it doesn't sound like you know he killed you on the song or anything yeah. like that. So, and you basically made the song on your own. I wasn't even there, you know. Mm. It's not one of the songs where I was like, I don't know Shame. about this and that, you know. So, I like that joint. And yeah, thank you for coming to the crib. Thanks. I'm gonna go play PS now. Good I definitely luck need to send album. you an invoice because you know the album launch is about 700,000 rand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that will be <laughs> it from the family. What did you say? Must call it again? The Family Tree Mansion Fam episodes yeah, or podcast. Fami family Tree Mansion podcast. Yes. We just want you to come here, be comfortable. We've got questions to ask. I'm not going to hold every interview. Maybe some interviews must be... Who, me? Capo. And or me. you. Yeah, oh, yeah. since you presented now. Yeah. So the first one is me. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I don't want it to be too long and too boring. We Peace. could do like a two-part. Yeah, we could do a part two. Two-part. Two yeah. part.